As we have seen, advertising has an effect on how we reason and make informed decisions. Knowing this causes us to ask, how does this impact society and our ability to govern ourselves? Plato in the Republic puts democracy near the bottom of his list of government types. It has been explained that his views of democracy, he, he views democracy as a hodgepodge of desires in no particular order. Archbishop Chaput puts forth a more hopeful view in his book, Render Unto Caesar. He recalls the importance of the Christian tradition and the notion of human dignity that forms the premise for modern democracy. Public political discourse is an acknowledgement of the dignity of every human person and that their thoughts are worth something to the human community. The problem, however, is the quality of our current political discourse. In the first presidential campaign to utilize television for debates, we see this shift. America's response to the first Nixon-Kennedy debate in, 19, in the 1960 campaign showed that the majority of people who watched the debate on television thought that Kennedy had won because he looked more at ease, while those fewer who had heard the debate on the radio believed that Nixon had clearly won. This discrepancy isn't so far-fetched when we understand a little more about political campaigning and non-print media. As Neil Postman explains in Amusing Ourselves to Death, and as Joe McGinnis exemplifies in a book entitled The Selling of the President on Nixon's 1968 campaign, political discourse has fallen from hours-long debates over issues that require evidence to slogans. Both authors suggest that this happened with a shift from print to television, from words to images. Words convey facts, but images can be used to evoke affections about a candidate's overall character, conveying little voters need to know to make informed decisions about who will better run the country. When it comes to advertising, it ought to be clear that important decisions need to be made with an awareness of the common good for society, with an awareness for the gaps of the impoverished and the rich, the weakest and those with the most power. Being moved toward our own self-fulfillment by powerful images is not the surest way to bring about the common good through our human use of reason. We need to note how advertisers use certain techniques to convince us to buy products and appreciate the availability of information about products we need or justifiably desire. We must overcome the bombardment to our senses to find we, what, we truly, what will ful truly fulfill our desires. In order to discern the good, man must foster an awareness of the situation and the needs of society through public discourse, a discourse grounded upon truth, the truth of the human person, and the proper order of his desires. Reaching this requires a renewal in education, the art by which the whole person, especially their reason, is guided along the, their dynamic development. These suggestions, awareness, public discourse, and education are all vital in making sure the good of advertising is able to outshine its negative implications and fully participate in the development of the human person and his, for his ultimate good. First, I'd like to wish Ms. Heffern a happy birthday. <laughs> Second, I'd like to thank Dr. Wilkins for being the cop in this and helping us all organize and keep on track and getting this presentation prepared and finished on time. And of course, we'd all like to thank all of our professors who have helped us get to this point. We hope you enjoyed our presentation, and we thank you all for coming, and now we'd like to leave it open to questions. Yes, sir. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank yeah. you very much. critique that has gone on with advertising, what effect has that 
expertise had in modifying the very things that uh, you find problematic in advertising. Uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> in the media history group, I don't know if you remember, it was a long time ago, but um, <laughs> the audience has become increasingly skeptical of advertisements and of product claims, um, and this has led to some interesting phenomena. Even the phenomenon of the anti-commercial commercial, in which um, an advertiser will essentially make fun of an advertising technique. Um, an interesting example of this was celebrity endorsements. For a while, Sprite had a campaign where they had a very famous basketball player talking lovingly about Sprite, but in the corner they had a little cartoon of the same basketball player with bags of money every time he made a claim. Um, so it has been interesting to see how advertisers has, have responded to um, negative visions of their own industry. But we did find a lot of that. Does that answer your question a little bit? <laughs> well, more precisely, the, in your critique, you're very concerned about advertising deleterious effects on personal, and uh, and I, I'm wondering about this you know, long-standing critique, which you are now a part of. Uh, how is it? Uh, what impact has it had in altering that that impact that you worry about on the human person? If any. Well, we have seen some um, some sort of advertisements geared at positive effects on the human person. Uh, the most classical example would be the public service announcement. Um, but other than that, can anyone else? Here we go. <coughs> I'll just stay down here. Um, <laughs> or maybe down. I think some, some recent examples, we've talked about how advertising uses advertising to make fun of advertising, but I think to, to look at some recent examples of how they just keep shifting their way of doing it, in a way, it does show that we need to constantly keep our awareness up. Now, the question is to whether or not we're doing that very well. Um, I would say that it varies between those who are aware of how much media they take in, in in general. If you're aware of how much TV you watch or how much computer time you spend, then you're probably in a different place than someone who doesn't think anything of that. So it varies by level of awareness. I, I would say in our society, there are those who are aware and those who either aren't aware or don't care to be aware how much advertising is influencing them. I don't know if anybody else would care to address this as well, but I think that is one difference. Does, does that cover kind of what you're looking for? Uh, I don't know about Okay, <laughs> then uh, I guess um, any, any other questions? Dr. Um, this is a real problem, and everybody's recognized it's a problem. Um, Let's get to the solution. 